I mean, he used the pack of reds to, to bring the cue ball back into Bork. It's a half ball pot, knowing that he kiss into the edge of the pack, and it's a clever shot, this. Yeah, he's even more clever if he thought he'd get the half ball on the yellow and <laughs> leaving the cue ball tight in the rail. He'd be really happy with that result. Paul. Yeah, Paul will judge that. <coughs> Suppose he's. I well, wouldn't be happy it's gone in there, but it could have been worse. Sometimes it could have, you know, they jaw and the cue ball comes right up to the business end. Look for a minute there, who decided to take a long one, and he still might. And because of his cue power, he can screw back up to the ball cushion to get onto the yellow. That's what he's deciding to do, I think. That's what he played. He did have a bit of an angle, didn't he, on that red? He, he thought it had definitely got back into Bork off a straight one. But he's not left anything easy, which he could have done after that. to be questionable now, the length of time that Neil is taking. Good shot, though. <laughs> Worth waiting for that one. one. Be honest there, John was saying to me, surely you'll play the double as a shot to nothing. I didn't think you'd see enough of it. John was right. Yeah, I just like to see Neil here score a few, but a lot quicker and a lot more fluent. He's at his absolute best when he's playing at a much better tempo than this. <coughs> Not straightforward at the minute to, to get on the, his next red. It's one of those, isn't it, where he'd rather not kiss the pink here. He'd either cannon into the red to the left of the pink or the red to the right of the pink. He needs to play some sort of cannon here to, just to slow the cue ball down. The one to the left of the pink, if you could guarantee it in that full ball, he'd be delighted with it. Well, play the cannon to the pink, and that's worked out OK. Did well to control that. Nine. Yeah. Wasn't happy with that particular contact, but no damage done there. <laughs> contact he got. Yeah, see the red jump off the bed of the table, but 
not a problem. And he's just two or three shots away from having these absolutely perfect. A couple of little cannons required. I like to move the red, the two reds that are near the top cushions, get them out of the way, and then the black will be available in both 60. pockets. Seventh. Hit that well. Twenty-three. Well, this is now an excellent chance to close again to within two, and also an excellent chance for a very high break. We're looked into say a century at the moment. Yep. And that black will pot past that red that's on the top cushion. We thought that might have been stopping it. And it doesn't, so it's an even better chance than I thought. And I just got that the other red away. On the left hand side, pot that. Just check in, you're going to stay there and make sure the black does pot again. Third. Yes, and the black after this next shot, of course, will be well into both corners. Just asking the referee to respot it again. It did still pot, but he just wants to make sure, because he probably felt the last time it potted a little easier than that. It does pot quite, quite easily, though. Yeah, sometimes you get little indentations in the cloth after a couple of days playing. The black might have just settled into the spot in an awkward position for, for Neil. So he just, you know, no harm in, in saying referee's going to respot it for you just to ask him. And then he'd let us just pop this and stun down and get that red out the way. He keeps looking at the angle all the time to make sure. He keeps thinking it's pretty tight. So let's get that red away next after this black. Yeah, he's on it now. So. This is a wonderful <laughs> chance. And I'm not going to say it either, will he? 38. The fact that he's left-handed, those two reds on the left-hand side are no problem at all. And he will pass the sentry before leading the green. So all of a sudden, this is a great chance. Well, he obviously did have a kick. I didn't detect it from the commentary box. We'll detect it from this slow motion, though. Mm, I didn't detect one there, John, did you? Cue ball's gone in the right place. One. Yeah, it didn't look 
a big one if it was one. It was also a shot he was playing side, wasn't it? The angle he had, he had to, to widen that out a bit by playing a bit of run inside there, so he knows better than we do, but seven. Eight. Well, of course. Yeah. Need contacts again, so might not have enough, enough set of balls in the crucible at the way we're going at the minute. Forty. Just checking whether those reds go. Of course, the two reds being on the left-hand side. Well, both players are left-handers, but as I say, being over that side, it's great for Judd here. Well, that was nicely played. I think the position should be perfect. Couldn't have hit that any better. We had a look before to see whether that bottom red will pot, but even if it doesn't, he can play a cannon. Hmm. Not great. 28. Yes, both reds cuttable, both reds difficult. Here we go in and out of balk with this cue ball here. Stuff. Break. Breaks down on 28. He's 15 points behind. She's got to put up with a slight disturbance. See the table's session's finished there. First session, so you can see the people leaving the crucible on the other side, slowly as possible and quietly as possible. They're trying to anyway. A fraction hard, but it's just pulled up in time. Five. It's 20 in front. Both reds. Preferably with colours, which will probably mean that Judd won't come back to the table. Six. We won't be getting the red from there. Oh, we've just got a nice slight angle. John has now thought he was dead straight, but he can force it over to get probably about nine inches away from the middle pocket on the left hand side. Yeah. We mentioned it earlier, both players left-handers, so pretty good from over there. Doesn't have to do anything with the cue ball. I'm a little bit worried about the balls as well on this at the moment because they were kicking earlier, but it's some heavy contacts again, it's two or three already in this frame, so it must just be the conditions out there today. Well done, that puts him 28 ahead. Concentrate and knock the pink in. 
And this is a frame he'd have been desperate to win. Means he's won the first little mini session by three frames to one. Back to just two behind instead of four. So definitely game on. Jim Tubbs Knight. decided to carry on. So, but barring snookers, Robertson would have closed to just two behind. Well, just have a look at the scoreboard here because obviously he's snookered himself and he's thinking if I swerve around this green and not the black in, he's just making sure that he can't win because it's a, quite a tough snooker to hit. So they're going to have to play the swerve. So 36, if he knocks the black in, 29, and then he'd want snooker the tie. So he's got to be a little bit careful here. Well, they can actually see it, so I don't know what the problem was. Lee Robertson to so have a look at the scoreboard and because he's got a chance of getting in behind the black here. No, no, he's decided Very to concede. Team. So Very Robertson would have been what, hoping to win that session 3-1. He has done and he closes the gap to two but still trails by seven frames to five. <laughs> 